So I want to get to this article. This is from Jessica Corbett of Common Dreams. And I mean, the title and the subtitle kind of say it all. Horrible and unconscionable betrayal. Biden DOJ backs Trump line three approval. Quote, you are siding with a handful of corrupt corporate elites over honoring treaty rights, climate, water, the future of life on Earth. This is kind of the same story that we've seen time and again when it comes to these oil pipelines. You know, them impeding on the territorial sovereignty of indigenous tribes, it posing a threat to the water supply. It's it's the same story again, rinse and repeat. You know, we, we get one pipeline defeated and another one pops up. It's like whack-a-mole. But let's read this here. Indigenous and, and environmental activists fighting against the Line 3 tar sands pipeline were outraged Thursday after the Biden administration filed a legal brief backing the federal government's 2020 approval of the project under former President Donald Trump. Now, for those of you who missed it, I did a video talking about Merrick Garland. He is the um, head of the DOJ, obviously, and any bad legal precedent set by the Trump administration like Merrick Garland is upholding. So this is not surprising if you know anything about Merrick Garland, but I'll, I'll be quiet and we'll read the rest here. Critics of the project, which Canadian energy giant Enbridge has undertaken to replace an aging oil pipeline, blasted the U.S. Department of Justice's late Wednesday filing as a betrayal of President Joe Biden's pledges to address the climate emergency and respect tribal rights. White, a White House that is serious about protecting communities needs to start by listening to communities when they say they don't want an oil pipeline threatening their water and land, said Janet Redman, Greenpeace USA Climate Campaign Director. Backing Enbridge's Line 3 tar sands oil pipeline is a massive failure for a president that campaigned on tackling the climate crisis, and it's a betrayal of what, of, of what he promised the American people. I mean, listen, when we have so little time left to actually address climate change in a meaningful way, if we want to stop catastrophic levels of climate change, these oil pipelines, they can't keep popping up. We have to actually get serious about moving away from oil. Like, we, we've got to get off of oil, uh, which is why when we're talking about infrastructure, there's such a huge emphasis being placed on investing in clean, green, renewable technology. Um, we, we have to change the way that we, we power the United States of America, and, and we're, we're not making much progress, or it feels like it, right? I mean, rhetorically speaking, people say the right things. Joe Biden said the right things, although not enough, but he's, his actions indicate that he's not serious. Benjamin Goloff, a campaigner at the Center for Biological Diversity, accused Biden of siding with a handful of corrupt corporate elites over honoring treaty rights, climate, water, and the future of life on Earth. Absolutely. Horrible and unconscionable betrayal. POTUS, you are siding with a handful of corrupt corporate elites over honoring treaty rights. Um, so this is a racist pipeline project forced down the throats of our people, an ecological time bomb, and a giveaway to a Canadian multinational oil interest, said Winona LaDuke, executive director of the Indigenous Environmental Group, Honor the Earth, in a statement Thursday. If the president is genuine in his pledge to take climate change and tribal rights seriously, his administration must stop defending the Trump administration's decision and undertake a genuine analysis of Line 3's environmental and human impacts she asserted and this is a reference to the trump administration basically they would and this is a bit of an oversimplification they would um rubber stamp everything they'd say oh well you know this this minimal climate review this climate impact review that we conducted it's good enough when in actuality it's not comprehensive it's not thorough it doesn't actually uh do anything to to try to gauge the level of damage that this would cause or the threat that these pipelines pose to uh, the water supply um, of, of indigenous tribes, of people in the nearby area. It's just all around. I mean, it is a betrayal. And I think that people are right to be angry here. Um, so I just want to get to the tweets here for the reaction. So Resist Line 3 says, The Biden administration uh, has just signaled that it does not intend to meet its commitments to climate change on racial justice or racial justice. This is why we need a mass movement to stop Line 3. We must force them to see us protect the water and honor the treaties. And again, like, it shouldn't be the case that every couple of years, indigenous people have to again fight for their territorial sovereignty, fight for water rights. It's, it's so frustrating that, you know, we do this every couple of years. And as I said, like, you know, not to repeat myself, but it's like whack-a-mole. You defeat one pipeline, another one pops up. This reads like a copy-paste 
from the Dakota Access Pipeline struggle, dismissing tribal cultural resources and inadequate environmental review as tribes demand a full EIS, uh, Environmental Impact Survey, is I believe what that acronym stands for. The Stop Line 3 ground fight moves into human rights crisis. Still no dapple. Yeah, um, so that's basically... Um, the short story, this article is, is relatively long, so I'd encourage people to read this article. But also, um, there's more uh, details about the pipeline, specifically the impact that it could potentially have that I uh, would encourage you to look at. But um, yeah, this is a betrayal by the Biden administration, not necessarily because he said anything in particular about this pipeline, but because he said he was serious about climate change. Now, we all know that his climate change plan wasn't as comprehensive as Bernie Sanders. I mean, he started off bad. He then adopted Jay Inslee and uh, elements from Elizabeth Warren's plan. Still not as good as Bernie Sanders, but I mean, that's neither here nor there. It's a betrayal, and I don't think we have to really uh, say much more about it than that. So yeah, I, I think that there there needs to be a concerted effort to defeat this. We need all hands on deck, and um, yeah.